Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Matt Burke. Um, and today I'm sharing an abstract that's probably something a little bit different than what's typically shown at APAC, but I'm hoping people can still find it interesting um, or important. So I'd first like to thank Shawin for giving us the background on TM um, and how it's a leading opportunistic co-infection with HIV in Southeastern Asia. Um, but yeah, so what is a mycovirus? Um, a mycovirus is a uh, virus that can infect and replicate within a fungal host. Um, they can be widespread, they can be found widespread in all of the major fungal groups. Um, and in some cases, they can cause hypervirulence or hypovirulence that can either increase uh, or decrease the severity of disease caused by the fungal host. Um, and so the most famous um, story of microvirus is the story of the American chestnut tree. So prior to the um, 1900s, one out of every one out of every four trees um, on the eastern coastline of the U.S. was an American chestnut tree. Um, and then the Asian chestnut tree was brought to New York, um, but it brought with it um, a fungus that causes chestnut blight. And chestnut blight spread rapidly um, throughout the U.S. And by the mid 1940s, uh, three to four billion American chestnut trees had died. Um, it was then discovered that a mycovirus called CHV1 conferred hypovirulence and actually reduced the severity caused uh, by chestnut blight. Um, and it was used as a biological control agent in both Europe and uh, Northeastern America with moderate levels of success. And recently, uh, a novel double-stranded RNA microvirus called TMPV1 has been discovered in Talaromyces uh, by the Lao group in Hong Kong. Um, this is the first report of a microvirus infecting a thermally dimorphic fungus. Um, and if you look at the picture on the right, uh, the double-stranded RNA extraction um, that shows the presence of TMPV1 um, in TM. This is one of the identification methods of TMPV1. The other is reverse transcription PCR. And so Lau screened their cohort of 55 TM isolates and found a prevalence of 12.7% um, of TMPV1 microvirus. And so what does TMPV1 do to TM? Um, well, Lau showed that TMPV1 confers hypervirulence within a mouse model, um, which means increased disease severity. So we see shortened survival times, as well as higher fungal burden in the organs of mice challenged with microvirus-infected talermyces. Uh, so we know sort of what it does, what TMPV1 does uh, in a mouse model, but it's pretty unknown how it affects human talermycosis disease. Um, so to help answer this, we wanted to screen our large cohort for the presence of TMPV1 uh, and then compare key clinical phenotypes um, between uh, patients with microvirus uh, and patients without microvirus. Um, and then we wanted to determine whether any of these uh, key clinical phenotypes might help us to predict patient outcomes, including the presence of microvirus. Um, and our hypothesis was in line with uh, the mouse model shown by Lau, and that is that uh, patients with TMPV1 infected talermyces experience more severe disease and have worsened outcome compared with uh, patients that have TMPV1 free talermyces. And so just a little bit about our cohort, uh, we had access to 269 clinical TM isolates from patients who um, patients with HIV and culture-confirmed talermycosis. Um, these patients participated in our etraconazole versus amphotericin B for penicilliosis trial, um, or IVAP. Uh, penicilliosis is the same as talermycosis these days. Um, and we collected longitudinal disease severity and patient outcome data over the course of the study. Uh, and patients were enrolled in five hospitals in Vietnam from the most HIV prevalent areas. Um, and so if you look at the Kaplan-Meier uh, curve of mortality, uh, two things are really uh, sort of um, important here. The first is that amphotericin B is a much um, more effective treatment for patients with talermycosis than etraconazole. 
And the second is that uh, teller mycosis um, can be a very deadly condition. Um, we see overall mortality of 17%. So it's important for us to figure out how TMPV1 contributes to this mortality. So we screened our cohort for the presence of microvirus using these same two identification methods as LAO. And we found that 11.2% of our cohort was positive for microvirus. Uh, and when you consider this compared with LAO's 12.7%, um, it's pretty consistent. Uh, and so then we performed a univariate analysis to compare key variables between patients with and without microvirus. Uh, we chose these variables because they um, traditionally are predictors of uh, patient outcome. Um, so there's really sort of two takeaways here. The first is that the only statistically significant uh, variable is geography, where we see that patients from northern Vietnam are much more likely than patients from southern Vietnam to uh, have microvirus. The other sort of takeaway, um, while it's not statistically significant, still sort of a trend. That is that patients with microvirus, actually we see lower fungal burden than patients without it. Uh, and similarly, we see uh, lower disease severity or lesser disease severity in patients with microvirus than in patients without microvirus. And this is really interesting because it's kind of goes against what our hypothesis was. Um, and so we, we wanted to look further into this geographical aspect. Um, and so we see that 19.4% of the patients residing in northern Vietnam were TMPV1 positive, and only 3.6% of the patients residing in southern Vietnam were TMPV1 positive. And so to find out if there's any genetic difference between TM isolates um, infecting patients from northern and southern Vietnam, we used whole genome sequencing to um, uh, check our 30 TMPV1 positive isolates um, and sort of see what was going on. And we found that uh, um, TM isolates from northern and southern Vietnam belong to two distinct clades, the northern clade and the southern clade. Uh, and within our 30 uh, TM isolates that had microvirus, 80% of them belongs to the northern Vietnam clade. Uh, lastly, we identified factors that predict poor patient outcome using both univariate and multivariate analysis. Uh, poor outcome we defined as death, relapse, and iris, which is immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome. So the most important takeaways here, um, again, are that geography um, is statistically significant here, um, and actually uh, patients from northern Vietnam have a 50% um, less likely odd of, odds of uh, having a poor outcome than um, patients not from northern Vietnam. So what that means now is that patients from northern Vietnam are both more likely to have microvirus, but also less likely to have a poor outcome. Um, and the other statistically, statistically significant finding here is that uh, patients treated with etraconazole are more likely to have a poor outcome. Um, so in summary, TMPV1, TMPV1 can be found in 11 to 13 percent of TM isolates. Um, it was found more commonly in northern Vietnam than in southern Vietnam. Uh, and TMPV1 was not associated with uh, increased disease severity or worsened patient outcome, but there's actually some evidence to suggest that it may help protect against severe disease. Um, and so despite the fact that uh, in our analysis, presence of microvirus was not statistically significant, uh, it's still, it doesn't mean that it's, it's not. Um, there's a lot of uh, different variables in a human study than in a, a controlled mouse experimental environment. Um, and also patients that are really sick or patients that are dying are not making it to um, the hospital to enroll in our trial. Um, so I think to fully understand the impacts of this microvirus on telomycosis patients, um, we need to repeat this in a larger and independent cohort um, to really account for um, some of the confounding variables here. And I'd like to thank my lab team 
as well as my project collaborators and our sources of funding, and also APAC for allowing me to share this abstract.